Excellent. Maybe we should uh, kick it off. For those folks who are here on time, we've got something for you to do. My name's Nadine Block. I go, I use she, her pronouns, and we'll be doing some intros in a moment with my fabulous uh, com compatriot and co-facilitator, Ray Avalea, who you can see on the screen. While you're waiting, we have something great for you to participate in. This will be an interactive session. So you can see on the screen a screenshot of a slide from a Google Doc that we are inviting you to engage with us in. And I believe that Ray can post that link in the chat box. And so while we're waiting to start off officially in another two minutes, we invite you to go to that link and go to slide number two, which will be this uh, spectrogram. And you are invited to take one of the little symbols on the bottom, pick your favorite symbol, color, whatever, and drag it onto that, uh, that chart right there. Answering the question, what is your comfort level or what kind of experience have you had with planning actions? Everything from I'm an old hat, I do it all the time, I teach other people on the far right side to folks never planning an action, it's terrifying, or I've been to them, I've reported on them, but maybe not too much. So if you are here and willing to engage, we'd love to see you put a little icon somewhere on that uh, axis to indicate what your comfort level is with planning actions. And whoops, all, I can't, all you have to do is click on one of those things and you can drag it to wherever you feel comfortable. And my internet is not very good, so you probably won't see it update in real time <laughs> on, on the screen share. But if you're in the document, uh, you should be able to drag. And I see that some people are dragging um, things in different places, which is great. So go ahead, if you want to icon, drag it wherever you want. From the far left side, for those of you who are just joining us, we're starting with a little interactive exercise. Um, please click on the bit.ly link to join our Google Doc for participants. Slide number two is a virtual spectrogram or sociogram. We'd like you to drag a little icon to wherever you feel you are on that axis of comfort level around planning actions. And um, I see that there's three or four or five folks there. Feel free to drag it above the axis so we can actually see it. Uh, that would be great. Um, that would be really helpful. Everything from I don't go to actions at all, they're too terrifying, I've never planned one, to oh man, I'm doing it every day, I did one this morning, I taught people how to do one, just go for broke. Or sometimes maybe you're in the middle, sometimes you go, sometimes you don't, you've done some maybe support roles, but you've never actually le led something specific or put in place the whole, the whole shebang. Excellent. Let's see what's happening. Great. People are... Go ahead and drag your little icons above the axis if possible so we can differentiate the icons collected at the bottom, which should be dragged up above the axis. That would be great. All right, that's really nice. Okay, welcome to people who are joining us uh, on this call. While we're waiting a minute for people to gather, we're inviting you to participate interactively from the get-go. For beautiful trouble, what kind of comfort level or experience do you have with planning actions? Go to the bit.ly link, which will let you into a Google Doc. Slide number two is an interactive slide where you will be able to uh, pull one of the icons from the bottom up to the top above the axis level and see what the comfort level and planning level of other participants is with planning actions. Looks like we're getting pretty good spectrum across the board. So while um, we're in this uh, moment, we can also perhaps start our introductions. What do you think, Ray? Are we ready to do that? That sounds great. Well, as you can already tell from the start of this session, Nadine and I are really into popular education, to participatory work, and it's a, a, an added fun challenge to be in a webinar, not be able to see each other this morning, but I just want to um, invite us to feel that we're in a virtual real room, that we're not in the Zoom googly eyes, but we're really gathering together across the miles. 
And if you want to use the chat feature and um, you make sure it says to all panelists and attendees, you can go ahead and introduce yourself if you want to share your name, any pronouns, uh, the land and indigenous land where you're located, where you're calling in from. Uh, my name is Ray Abalea. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm joining you today from the Colorado Rockies on occupied Arapaho lands in a small town called Nederland. And I'm uh, originally hailed from the West Coast. Um, and at this time in my life, troublemaking looks like being a trainer with Beautiful Trouble and helping to coordinate our projects and doing digital strategy with various nonprofits from climate justice to um, Israel-Palestine work to um, racial and economic justice. And um, I am finding a lot of uh, inspiration and resilience, particularly through my work as an essential worker in the restaurant industry at this point in my life. So I want to turn it over to um, my amazing co-facilitator, who is Nadine Block. I met Nadine 15 years ago when she was training a nonviolent direct action workshop in DC. And I have to say Nadine is one of my lifelong mentors, um, my personal movement sheroes, and has taught me so much about what I know about um, effective strategic organizing and also organizing from the heart and really building relationally. So Nadine, tell us about you. Oh my gosh, Ray, that was lovely. And Ray, for those of you, uh, my name is Nadine Block. I use she, her pronouns. I'm speaking to you from the People's Republic of Tacoma Park outside of Washington, D.C., uh, Pis Piscataway land, for those of you who are interested in indigenous roots. And uh, I am so glad to be here with Ray, who I have always looked up to myself and who has taught me a lot about community building, uh, infusing heart and spirituality with this work. and the importance of supporting each other long term through this struggle. So really happy to be here with all of you today. And thank you so much for Netroots for inviting us to do this program and for transitioning to the online platform that allows us all to be together even in this tumultuous time. Um, and so we're gonna really jump right into it. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, there is a bit.ly link to a Google Doc uh, that we have invited people to participate in with a spectrograph in the beginning. You can still do that if you want. We also are encouraging people to write their names and pronouns and lands that they're from uh, in the chat box. You'll see that. Uh, the overall session today will be a quick, quick view of the beautiful trouble universe through a quick slideshow. And then we're gonna jump into an interactive exercise using the card deck and showing you how you can harness this incredible resource for your own campaigns and to make your own work much more effective, which is so critical in this time with our limited resources. So um, I think we're just gonna jump. Did I forget anything, Ray? Sounds great, let's do it. All right, here we go. Let's see if it's, uh, huh. okay, we're building people power. So this is the bit.ly again, if you missed it, it is case sensitive. So Beautiful Trouble, capital B, capital T, Netroots, MN. Here we go. So the world of Beautiful Trouble, we started, gosh, maybe six, 10 years ago, six years ago, writing a book in a cloud called Beautiful Trouble. It was so uh, powerfully received. People said, you have to take this on the road. You have to do more with it. So we birthed the training program, the jam sessions, that collected stories. And this is really how we start, right? We start with collecting these powerful stories, but we don't end there because we are very concerned about accessibility and making sure that people can incorporate the lessons from these stories into their own context, into their own scenarios to be most powerful. So Beautiful Rising was a follow-up book based in stories from the global south. We have a game, which we're gonna explore in a minute, study guides, all kinds of things available on our websites, which are about to be redone within the month, and even a chat bot so you can download things when you don't have great internet because we are again really convinced that it matters how we can access this information. Here is our beautiful trouble strategy card deck um, and it is a collection of oh, 99 plus cards. I think it's actually about 120 of them. We're going to quickly run through some of them and the key to the work that we do is that uh, is about accessibility and so what we have is what we call a pattern language 
or a way of teasing out lessons that can be easily applied wherever you are, however you do your work, through understanding principles, theories, specific tactics. And then we also have other cards about methodologies and stories. So this is just a brief overview of what's in our card deck and how we think about it. We invite people to submit their own lessons. Um, we have a new uh, collection coming out, the Africa edition, focusing on stories from that continent. It's really exciting work. We're really glad you're here. So we're gonna jump right in very quickly to an examples from each of these categories. Make the invisible visible is one of the cards. Oh, and I'll point out that that QR code in the bottom should work for you even on your computer if you hold your phone up to it. And it should take you to that page if you're interested, which is available in Portuguese, Arabic, Spanish, and English at the moment. And so, Nadine, while you're um, sharing about the Beautiful Trouble resources, if you want to stop screen sharing, I'm going to share slides from my computer for you. Um, and um, give me just one sec here. And I'll just toggle the slides so we can make sure everyone can see everything here. So uh, here's our strategy card deck. Great. And take it away. So sorry with, with the, yeah. Okay, excellent. So here we go. We've got our strategy card deck. And you can see we are now on to make the invisible visible, which is the next slide. Talking a really basic principle as activists, sometimes the thing that we have to do first is actually make the problem recognizable to people who can't see it. So you'll see on the left uh, examples of two, what we call street murals, one about Amazon workers in this time of COVID in front of Jeff Bezos house on the street in Washington, DC. And the other one, an example in Washington, DC also, where the mayor of DC, as you all probably knew, painted Black Lives Matter on 16th Street leading to the White House. But she also at the same time was funding the police to an increased amount. And so activists took it into our own hands to correct that. If on the street. And on the right, you can see two examples of making the cost of COVID visible. One is at the Trump Hotel, and uh, actually the one is at the White House, but they're body bags making the cost visible. We'll go to the next one. And there's many ways to make things visible, physically and invisibly. We've also got a really basic one called simple rules have brand results. And on the right, you'll see an example of that from Norway, where people placed 7,500 pairs of shoes on the edge of this uh, body of water to call attention to the crisis in Moravi, Mor Moria, the, the closest and well overpopulated refugee camp that was facing a crisis, particularly because of COVID. So um, this is also making the problem visible and also using simple ways for people to participate together. Go to the next one. We've got direct action. This is a theory, right? So we've transitioned from principles to theories. The theory of direct action being a powerful way to change things when powers that be are not giving you what you want. And one example is uh, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or the organized a uh, place where people created a space free of police. That's one way of putting in place the future that you want. And the other is a picture of a statue going into the river in Bristol in the UK. As things have come down, people have taken into their own hands what they want to see have happen. Really and nice. I want to just point out that for those of you who have a cell phone nearby, you can actually hold up your cell phone camera to the screen. We're showing you real images from our card deck that have QR codes that are live. So if you want to learn more about one of the tactics or principles or theories we're talking about, just hold your phone up to that QR code. It'll take you right to the website. Excellent. So here's another, here's a tactic, another tactic, right? Your real projection. We've seen it used particularly in this time of COVID in very effective ways. So you all might recognize the upper right hand is uh, images from the COVID memorial collecting stories of those who have died nationally. And you could also see this as making the invisible visible, the cost that we have to our families and loved ones. The gorilla projection on the Robert E. Lee statue in Richmond with George Floyd's picture on that statue, so powerful, um, reclaiming that uh, memorial. Mm -hmm. Another category of, of cards that we have 
our stories. As we say, we like to start with these stories and anchor our work in the stories of resistance and creative engagement all over the globe. And the Replacing Cops with Mimes comes from uh, Colombia, a very uh, appropriate conversation to look into in this moment where we're talking about defunding the police and how small changes like putting mimes on the streets really affected daily life there. Justice for Janitors, another critical piece of a story to look at right now because it was a campaign um, in the years of 1994, 1995 across the country in key cities that mobilized weeks of rage, days of rage they were called, weeks of actions that were creative, disruptive, escalated, and involved many people to win significant changes. And right now, as we look at our country scenario facing the elections, potential uh, contested elections, possibilities of those in, in power not leaving office, this kind of story can help us understand the power of significant preparation, significant escalation, and the power of disruptive actions from blockades to boycotts and things like that. Great powers in these stories. And we tease out those lessons and connect all of the principles, tactics, and theories that make them work. Go ahead. And just to emphasize that point, the beautiful trouble pattern language goes both directions. And we'll see in a moment how tactics, principles, and theories can help us think up creative ideas, and also how we can take creative actions and campaigns and um, parse them out into the various tactics and principles and theories that made them effective or not, you know? Um, so the stories really are the culmination where we weave together all the tools in the toolbox and show how it works in real life. Great, um, and actually I'm gonna turn it right over. <laughs> yeah, this next slide is uh, showing you one of our methodology cards. So, um, you know, it's really easy for uh, us to sometimes get caught in kind of the cult of sexy tactics, you know, like, oh, the really cool puppets or the flash mob or the gorilla projection. Um, and a lot of what we do at Beautiful Trouble is we'll get a call from someone wanting us to do a training for an upcoming action. And then we start dealing, digging into the bigger picture strategy and really looking at how do we win? How do we organize to create the future we wanna see? And that's where a lot of these methodology tools come in. And um, you know, Spectrum of Allies is tried and true uh, tool for looking at and identifying the um, community you're trying to reach and understanding who are your active allies, who are the people who are gonna throw down and be in the streets with you and take action and, and be leaders um, and passive allies, neutral. We could do you know, a whole huge session at Netroots just talking about spectrum of allies and how do we use it, particularly leading up to the election to engage the people we need to, to um, make a difference. Uh, but here's one example. And this is you know, know your audience, right? So young people on dating apps, um, there's a whole register to vote campaign. You'll see two, two examples here uh, where people are using dating apps to get people out to, to vote. So knowing your audience, knowing where to find them, knowing how to motivate them and how to move them over rather than spending time arguing and fighting people who are completely on the opposite side of the spectrum from us. And I'll just mention, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants. So all these tools that are in the beautiful tool, Trouble Toolbox. It's not that Beautiful Trouble invented these things. We're just helping to amplify and um, support getting these tools out so we can be more effective and creative organizers. And I want to show you one more piece of our toolbox, which is our debates. Uh, we have seven debates in our card deck, and they're really showing us these kind of existential questions of how does change happen? What is our theory of change? Um, so here's one example, clicktivism can save the world versus the revolution will not be tweeted. And a lot of people are using these debates in the classroom. Uh, we've been participating in a lot of uh, online university classes in the last several months using these debates. Uh, they're also useful within an organization as you're either starting out and creating your values and basis and thinking about how you wanna engage in change making or uh, longtime organizers and institutions. Uh, they're a really interesting way to kind of spark conversation. Also good for road trips and banter on long drives. So, how does this all work as a game? 
Um, we have seven different games that we offer in the beautiful Trouble Toolbox, and we're always curious to hear how people are playing with the cards and making up their own games. But here's two examples. One is designing an action, which is what we often do when we're doing trainings or actually planning for real life actions, really getting clear on what our goals are, creating small teams and using a rapid prototyping design strategy to uh, use the cards as inspiration to iterate and quickly come up with a brainstorm of different actions and then presenting it back to each other in a really creative way. So everything that we do is open source. So you can take a screenshot right now or you know, buy a card deck and take this back to your organization and use it in these times. And you don't have to be together in person. You can use breakout groups, groups in Zoom to make small teams and, and, and try out how, how designing a creative action works for you. Today, we're gonna look at Cardstorm, which is a simpler version without breakout rooms and teams, where imagine you have three piles of cards on the table, tactics, principles, and theories, and we're gonna introduce a scenario to you in a moment, and then we're gonna flip over one card from each pile and brainstorm together right here in this training about action ideas to deal with that scenario. So Nadine, I'm gonna turn it over to you to give us a mission. All right, it's on the next slide and here we go. So your mission, should you choose to accept it? We are having a goal of supporting free and fair United States elections. The specific campaign objective attached to this goal that we're talking about today is to protect the Postal Service, very timely, to stop the privatization of mail in the long run and to protect the Postal Service right now to support free and fair US elections. You might also consider stopping Trump from defunding the USPS or keeping um, the Postmaster General DeJoy from sleeping at night or destroying the USPS. Either one of those things would be great. So in a minute, the next slide is gonna show us three cards that we picked randomly from the card deck. And we're gonna take this time to actually once again use the uh, interactive slide deck that we have and I can put that uh, bit.ly in the chat box again. So you can go to that bit.ly if you haven't already. There's an interactive slide deck. And starting on, on, uh, on uh, slide number four of the slide deck, or the slide that you see right now, you notice we have three cards that we've picked. The commons, which is a theory, distributive action, which is a tactic, and simple rules can have grand results, which we actually saw before as a principle. So these randomly picked cards are now our a catalyst to think about creative actions we could do to make sure that we defend the post office, right? To keep the uh, elections on track. In the interactive document on page five, six, seven, or eight, there are sticky notes. Feel free to write in those sticky notes, ideas that you have of actions that could be done to support the post office or support free and fair elections with inspiration from these cards, the commons, distributed action, or simple rules can have grand results. And for those of you who for, cannot get into that Google Doc, feel free to put it in the chat box and we'll try to move it from the chat into the Google Doc, right? And you can uh, just start right away with doing it however you like. Feel free to type into any of these um, boxes or like we said, into the chat box. And we'll take a minute or two to see what kind of ideas are coming up here. And then we'll start sharing out um, different things that we've got going. And you can play with these cards and this uh, action design prompt with the perspective of uh, your own local organization or a group that you work with in your area, or you might wanna take it totally theoretical sci-fi um, as if you had unlimited resources and you were somewhere other than where you are. Uh, I'm gonna stop screen sharing. So, and just a reminder. You wanna share the prompt slide again. Yeah. Want me to try? <laughs> For sure, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and screen share. So here's our three cards. And the question is, what is an action you might design with a group of folks 
that would, and let me go back to the previous slide, one sec. Here's the mission. So an action that would protect the postal service and stop the privatization of mail. This is great. We're seeing some ideas come in. We've got make stamp purchases for people to mail letters, reminding people to vote. Also, there's a big campaign going on to buy stamps anyways to fund the post office as it should be funded, which is awesome. Got someone talking about uh, a National Day of Action. Yep, people go to the post office. Decorating local pickup boxes with save me signs and info to learn more. At this point, maybe we actually need to chain ourselves to these little bo blue boxes so they don't haul them off. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's also a possibility to up the ante. Feel free to write in slide number five, six, seven. They're all the same. We anticipated there might be a number of people. That's great. Bunch of great actions coming in. And of course, you can write, you can write in the uh, chat box too. And also welcome if you've heard about an action that someone has done locally, nationally, somewhere that relates to this issue of supporting free and fair US elections and may have one of these theories, tactics, or principles at play. It's always interesting to look around and see what's going on out there in the real world and then wait, oh right, that tactic supports that. So we'll just take another minute here for the creative brainstorm. And uh, recognize that if you're on the West Coast, we're asking you to Think fast while you might still be having your early morning coffee. Getting the creative juices going. We'll collect them and work with them a little bit more as we move through things. So one of the things um, that we are doing in Beautiful Trouble, so that's one example of a way to use the card deck, just as a pure creative brainstorm exercise. You can flip through cards, you can change the tactics or um, theories or principles that you pick in order to give you more fodder for, or more food for thought, if you'd like. So another thing that we can do, um, and maybe we can share that on the next screen, is once you, think of an action that you might be doing, or even after you've done an action. You might notice in three flavors, we call them. So there are all these games that help you be creative. And there are games that are good for educational and training purposes. And there are games that are just complete fun, whether it's uh, Cards for Humanity or charades. Um, but we do have these strategic level games, uh, um, create uh, strategic level games, training level games, and also fun, the flavors. So if you see this, we've got Evaluate Your Action card up. And then we randomly picked a card before uh, to fuel this conversation. And the card that we picked was Make the Invisible Visible, which we already talked about earlier. So we'd love for you all to think about the ideas that people have posted on the interactive slides. And now think about how the principle, this Make the Invisible Visible, could or did or did not play a role in the idea that you had. And if it wasn't part of the action, what could you do differently for a better outcome using that principle? Or were there some that already used that principle? Which it does seem to me that there definitely were in, that, in the suggestions that you all had. So feel free on slide number 10 and 11, there's places to write in sticky notes. Again, well, how do you think make the invisible visible figured into any of these actions? Or if you saw something happen around the post office already, 
did it factor into that action or could it have factored into that action and supported it in a different way? Great. See some things here. Mm -hmm. Yep, people are talking about distributed actions and calls for stamp donations. That's great. Those of you joining us can feel free to drop in notes into the chat box if you need it. And I'm also going to drop again the participatory deck link in the chat box. That's great. So here I'm just projecting for those of you who can see the zoom the slide where we're inviting you to write in these uh, thoughts on evaluating your actions based on these, this principle of making the invisible visible. This is great. Sometimes this has to do with what's the action logic? Um, how are we actually conveying who's most impacted in the visuals and the story that gets told about the action? But sometimes it's also um, who's actually narrating the story? Um, and who are those people who are most impacted or most on the front lines of the issue getting to you know, be, be quoted in the media and being the spokespeople? And how are um, those who have more relative privilege, power, or access create, uh, stepping back and taking leadership from the most impacted, which is another principle we talk a lot about. This is great. I love this idea about gravestones and action ideas and bringing junk mail to the White House. And uh, yeah, this is fabulous. Adopting mailboxes and networking and tracking them. All right, that's really great. So if we think about um, one of the ways to think about um, making the invisible visible and the impacts it had is maybe to talk about uh, what happened today, just this morning in Washington, DC. Um, I was part of a crew here, uh, shut down DC crew here, and we went to the Postmaster General's house this morning, DeJoy's house this morning, to wake him up and deliver democracy. We wanted to make visible his connections to the corporate elite. We wanted to make visible the fancy uh, condominium he lived in. We wanted to make sure that people understood that they could take action, even in this moment where a lot of people are hopeless or, or un not clear about what they should do. So um, in, uh, this way we made visible uh, both the anger and the frustration of people. We talked about the fact that without a functional post office, people's medicines will be delayed, people's paychecks would be delayed, people who are collecting bills can't collect their bills in many cases, and we brought it right home to the neighborhood so that neighbors know that the criminal lives among them. Um, it was uh, covered by national media uh, live while we did it. And there was a whole collection of people who are now mobilized in DC, ready to do the next action. So thinking about building people power, not just around this election, but for the longer term, so we can make progressive change over time and really build our, co our connections. So we're really happy to have that work well. We encourage you all to think about what can happen in your own communities and um, things that we can do to improve our capacity to take action together. Great, I think now what, that- One of my favorite things about working with Nadine, I don't know if you remember those um, like hair club for men commercials from the 90s where it was like, I'm not only the president, but I'm also a member. <laughs> uh, and Nadine uh, will be, you know, frequently be doing a training on the same day that she's done some, uh, badassery action in the nation's capital at the same time. So these photos we literally were uploading right before we jumped on the line with you this morning uh, with these uh, this action that just happened this morning. So that's really great. Thanks, right? So I think maybe now we should take some questions. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Questions about beautiful trouble, questions about using the deck, questions about um, anything related to creative activism for your own projects. We'd love to spend a few minutes uh, chatting and hearing what your interest is before we move on. Um, and you can share a question in the chat. There's also a Q&A feature. So at the bottom of your Zoom, 
you'll see something that says Q&A and you can use that to submit a question. We've been having a lot of fun with uh, our, our trainings, both online and in person. Of course, right now in, in person is a little more difficult, but we train and work with people globally. Um, and so we're really happy to support your work if that seems to be appropriate. Great, I'm seeing um, Harry is uh, mentioning another game called Strike. So we often collaborate with our friends at TISA Collective. They put out a lot of progressive games for social change and TISA is uh, participating in Netroots. You can check them out, I believe, at their virtual booth. And uh, our card deck is sold with them as well. It's amazing to be able to create a product and be in collaborative partnership rather than competition. And um, we really wanna amplify TISA's work and they just came out with a new game called Strike that's about labor organizing. So super yes to checking it out. And Nadine's just put the acronym T-E-S-A in the chat. And we have a, a question from Hannah, um, who is part of Social Movement Technologies. And Hannah's writing, do you have experience yet using the deck in trainings other than today? So Nadine, I'm gonna turn that one over to you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we do. In fact, the whole history of this card deck is a fabulous one of what we call jam sessions or trainings. Jam sessions are an interactive inter uh, exchange of ideas that are part training, part uh, story sharing, part experiential uh, jam. And uh, so for, for this card deck comes out of uh, stories and lessons and, and beta sessions with people from all over the world in Bangladesh and Myanmar and Mexico and uh, Uganda and Zimbabwe and uh, France and Eng just like everywhere. Um, and uh, we are, we do in person, it is a lot of fun. We set up teams, we pick cards, we exchange cards, we perform our ideas rather than just type them or relay them with words. So the methodology itself is very interactive and infused with creativity and helps people get into roles. And then um, online, we do a number of different sessions in lots of different ways, sometimes preparing card deck slides ahead of time, sometimes pulling them live. In fact, we have at least one more game that we'll play with you before this session is over to show you what that looks like um, as we do it in person. That's great. And wondering how we'd structure the training. Uh, well, we do also several different types of trainings. Sometimes our trainings are open to the broader community and people are coming with their own issues or campaign ideas. And then we tailor that to make sure that everyone can work on the specific campaign that they're interested in. And sometimes uh, we are doing the whole training on one campaign or one strategic planning session based on one issue area. So uh, we can follow up more after this call. We'd love after this webinar to talk about how all the different spectrum of activities that we incorporate. There's a lot of resources online for free on our website and which I mentioned in the beginning is getting a complete overhaul. will be brand new and available hopefully by the middle of September and uh, will be available and Beautiful Rising is currently available in Portuguese, Arabic, Spanish, and English. Um, so we really look forward to uh, working through all of that with you. And you can also buy materials at a reduced cost. You can buy the book at a reduced cost. You can buy the card deck at a special Netroots Nation promo um, that we'll offer to you at the end of this, as well as very affordable books and the other things like the study guides that are available online for free at beautifultrouble.org, which we put in the chat box. So Harry's asking a question. The card deck is a brilliant idea. Is there a story behind the name? I assume that means the name Beautiful Trouble. Well, I mean, Tony, Tony K. Bambara said our job is to make revolution irresistible as uh, creatives. And um, we took that to heart. Uh, there's uh, many other ways that you can say this. We also have, um, when we translated this word, these words, beautiful trouble into many languages, uh, it is not exactly beautiful trouble. So um, I, I don't know, there's not more of a story. Our, the two folks who edited the first book, Dave Mitchell, a Canadian, and Andrew Boyd, an American, uh, coined that for the work uh, to begin with. And um, it's just been very compelling uh, to many people and allowed people to really 
think like John Lewis says about good trouble, uh, we find that integrating arts and culture in, into the work that we do is extraordinarily powerful um, and allows us to bring our whole selves and to be innovative and escalative at the same time in the work that we do. And when we look in the bigger picture at the um, efficacy or, or the effectiveness of strategic people power movements, we find that the ability to involve ever greater numbers of people through ever more interesting and creative ways is what turns the tide, what allows you to build more and more people engaging and builds people power that allows you to actually wield power. So what do we got? Any other right, questions? So we, we want to also invite if you have any questions about um, strategy or creative tactics at play in your own work, we'd love to hear what you're organizing on, what issues are firing you up, uh, what are you passionate about, um, and you know, it's often so easy to come to conferences and just hear and listen and absorb, but we're curious how you might put this uh, material to work in your own life. Uh, I wish that we were uh, all together as originally planned here in my current home city of Denver, preparing to do an action possibly at the detention center in Aurora um, or uh, some other very important thing. We have a lot going on here around anti-fracking work, um, but we're not. We're, we're, we're scattered all across many locations. And, um, and there's also power in, as we talked about earlier, distributed action and being in many places at once. And um, just seeing some folks writing in about organizing. Erica says, we're organizing around more affordable health care and Medicaid for all here in Colorado. Hi, hi, my neighbor, Erica. Good to meet you here. Um, and specifically on the ground with immigrants. Great. That's great. Does anybody on this call already have a card deck and using it in their work? That would be fun to know. That's great. And we see just uh, Stephanie working on a just transition in Houston, Texas. We find that this card deck um, is really effective in bringing people together and helping people visualize more or additional points of intervention, those actual physical places and uh, metaphysical places that you can think about taking action. Um, you know, whether in this case it's the Joy's house or the post office or the houses of the senators that are gonna be voting on a bill that will or will not fund the USPS or how do we, or the mailboxes that are being taken away, or um, you know, children who are engaged in uh, letter writing, um, and on and on. There's many, many ways that we can think about where are these different points of intervention, how do we make things work um, to expand who we can uh, connect with and who can take action with us to make sure that the power holders give us what we want. Yes. Great. I see Hannah talking about um, training organizers on ramping up with digital and developing tactics on the ground. One of the principles in the deck is developing synergy between online and offline strategy. And we talk um, a lot about that, particularly when we're talking with our comrades in the Netroots Nation community. Um, you know, how, and, and going back to that debate about clicktivism can save the world versus a revolution will not be tweeted. And you know, in my humble opinion of moderation is key, the answer is somewhere in the middle where it's both and, yeah, and um, how are the actions we're taking online helping to move people along that spectrum of allies toward active engagement um, and toward, um, toward offline action possibly as well, and also creating a more accessibility. We talk about creating many points of entry for people, and I think COVID has uh, laid bare or made more visible um, the relativity of risk and, um, and how to make things accessible for people to participate in. Uh, for, for my, and Nadine's holding up that card right now. Um, for myself, as somebody who is, has uh, autoimmune issues and, and ha has some health compromised issues, being able to participate online and not as being as active as I might normally be in the streets right now is really powerful and helpful. Um, and many of you might be in that, that same boat. Um, I also wanted to amplify what Karen wrote in about looking for more ways to help her, their, sorry, their union members um, and resident physicians understand and get creative about tactics. 
Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick screen share to share the link that Karen is talking about this great action to talk about affordable healthcare. And I see that there's signs in windows here um, and multiple, uh, multiple, multiple windows of a single building. And really powerful, thanks Karen for sharing that action. And it's simple, anyone can print out those letters and tape them up, doesn't need a lot of supplies. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and um, the someone's asking for the link to buy the deck. So it's in the deck that we shared with you and I'm gonna also be putting it right now in the chat. And we have a special discount code for all of you who joined the session today. Um, and I'll share that right now as well. And then I think in a moment, maybe if we have one more question or comment, we're gonna pivot back to show you one last way that we can use the deck before we break for lunch or brunch or dinner, whatever your time zone is. <laughs> um, so here's the link and the code is NN2020 and that gets you 15% off of our whole shop, especially the card deck. All righty. Nadine, any other uh, questions or shall we pivot back? I think we should pivot back. I think that's great. If there's time left, we can address something at the end if we need to. Uh, yeah, so we're going to share one more way uh, of um, using this card deck while we've got you. Um, and we know it will be fun. Great. So um, I'll just touch on these two cards. Um, which are included in the deck and talk about as we were speaking about relative potential risks and also how to evaluate your action using what we call score, which is a variation of what you might have heard as SMART goals, um, but looking at, uh, at the relative success of, a, of an action. And again, always looping back to strategy. Here is the card deck and a little sneak preview of the cards and the different suits to play with. And now we're gonna do something called divine the future. So I have here in my hands a deck of cards. Here it is. Um, there's so many cards. So I'm just taking one small pile, but you can see how many there are. And um, this is a very simple and age old craft of going to uh, some external source a deck of cards, tarot deck, a pendulum, a, looking up at the stars and saying, what's the wisdom for me? And kind of throwing it out to chance. So we might ask a question about what is one uh, principle or, or tool that we need when we're moving forward uh, in this uh, pretty uncertain, very challenging, pretty perilous, uh, intense time that we're living in. And um, I don't want to make light of the intensity of the moment that we're in, the amount of death due to COVID, the amount of death due to racism and police brutality in this country, um, the, the bombing in Beirut this past week, the ongoing occupation and violence uh, on um, indigenous lands and uh, oppressed populations, and the list goes on and on and on. And if you're participating in this conference, then you already know how high the stakes are and how the clock is ticking on climate injustice and um, how, how big the stakes are in both this national election and also in our grassroots work and for our families and, and the, the future generations that may, God willing, come up beyond us. And so uh, we tend to be pretty quirky and humorous at Beautiful Trouble, but we also get very real about creating time to mourn as well as organize. And so we're just going to pull a card here and um, see what the future has in store for us. Here's the deck. I'm gonna pull out this one. And it is, joy is a revolutionary force. <laughs> so here it is. And the card says, protests can be fun. Find pleasure in the process and let your creativity and joy guide you. As Adrienne Marie Brown said, feeling good is not frivolous, it is freedom. So in addition to our beautiful Trouble Library, I want to mention Adrienne Marie Brown's book, Emergent Strategy, and also her latest book, uh, Pleasure Activism, and um, just uh, really amplifying 
but the joy and the creativity that can be central to the work we do. Uh, someone who ascribes myself as a feminist, I think there's also a lot of potency in uh, gender justice work around centering joy and um, dismantling patriarchy in the process. Um, so that is our future divination. For some reason, people are saying they're not seeing you in the chat box. So let's see if we can show the card we pulled again. Uh, maybe. Here's the card that I'm holding up. I don't know if you can see me, but um, you might only be able to see the screen share. So let me just stop sharing for a moment. And here's the card. Joy is a revolutionary force principle. And um, again, there's a QR code here that your phone might be able to capture, but we can also share the link directly to this specific principle in the toolbox. Um, we also often use these principles as a way to do internal organizing. Like you might decide that when you're creating the values for your affinity group or organization that you want to, uh, you have joy as a revolutionary force be a governing principle of your organization. That's another way to use the cards. Um, so we'll, we'll share that link. I know it's hard to hold it still and like actually see it on the screen and some people are on by phone. So don't worry, you'll get all the links um, in, in the doc. And um, as we're getting moving toward the hour, we also wanna share with you um, just a couple of additional resources that you can use. So we'll share all of, all of these links are in the single link and why don't we go ahead and share that bit.ly again uh, for the slide deck that you have access to where you can see all of these links. Um, we wanna mention that we have an Africa edition called New Pan-Africanism of Beautiful Trouble um, that was co-authored by activists throughout the Afri African continent in Arusha, Tanzania. And over the past two years, we've been editing all these new content pieces and that downloadable free ebook will be launching next Tuesday, August 18th at 2 p.m. Nairobi time, which is uh, 7 a.m. for those of you on the East Coast. And there's a bit.ly here where you can sign up for the Zoom. It's a free session. And hear from grassroots uh, African organizers talking about tactics and strategies and tools that are working there. Um, you know, when we were in the process of uh, ha holding these jam sessions, these writing sessions for a beautiful rising all around the world, gathering stories written uh, of, by, and for grassroots activists in creative resistance struggles, I don't think we could have imagined that so much wisdom um, from all over the world, particularly the Global South, would be so relevant in the struggle and fight uh, ahead. This was in 2015 and 2016 and, uh, and, and in the post uh, you know, in the Trump administration world, so much of that knowledge is so key for us also here at home. So the cross-population, cross-pollination of tactics has been really beautiful. And we also want to mention that we're coming out with a sequel to Beautiful Trouble. You get to hear about it first here at Netroots Nation that we have launched a crowdfunder uh, at the link on your screen to create a book that is uh, not just about tactics for resistance, but about how do we build the world that we wanna see and live into? Um, what does it look like to have economic justice and climate justice and racial justice? And over 70 pieces are coming together, tactics and tools you can use in your community to start building this other world possible. And finally, we're sharing a link to an article that uh, Nadine co-authored on uh, creatively fueling the struggle to defund the police with a lot of uh, how all these different tactics are being used in the Black Lives Matter movement. And we have all of our contact info here. We send out email updates regularly, highlighting creative tactics and new tools. Um, not, and by regularly, I mean like once in a moon cycle. So don't worry about getting your inbox inundated, once in a blue moon, I should say. Um, and you've got all the ways to find us. We'd love to come do a training with your group. These days we can do it without even having to fly and use jet fuel. Invite us to come pop into your, your next session. We'd love to connect with you more. Please stay in touch with us. Um, I put our contact information in the chat and we can share it again too for those of you interested. Um, and again, here's the, the, the code to get your card deck.
I will turn it back over to you, Nadine. Yeah, no, this is great. Really, really was a pleasure spending time with Ray. And thank you, Nick, for the tech support um, and Netroots for pivoting to this online way. So good luck, everybody. Visit uh, the TISA Collective uh, online to see all of their games. The big difference, I mean, I don't know, if the, the big difference between the book and the card deck is the card deck is a game you can hold. You can actually hold this box in your hand and the cards in your hand and play the game. And um, we know that people have short attention spans and we know that people are really interested in figuring out how to make the most of their limited time and resources. And so this can really help um, make your training successful, make your campaign planning uh, innovative and therefore successful. Um, so we are really excited to share that with you uh, because we are committed to change, to making a uh, revolution irresistible. Um, and thanks so much for taking the time and I uh, hope the rest of the day goes well for everyone. Signing Great up for me. We're going to put one more time in the chat the link to the Google slide deck that has all of the links in it. So you really just need one link because it's hard to track all these things these days. Just copy this one link. It's a bit.ly, beautiful trouble NN. And just a reminder that bit.ly links are case sensitive. Right. And while you're doing that, if you noticed, if you felt like it, we'd love feedback. Slide number 13 and 14 are a question. What are you taking away from this session? You can feel free to write us a love note or a suggestion on how to change this presentation or anything you want about questions about working together in the future, resources, things like that. Um, we're happy to have all that feedback. We're really committed to what we call popular education. We know that you all come with a lot of strengths and knowledge and resources and abilities and aptitudes that would be really important for this work. So thank you so much. Thanks for your input. Thanks for spending time with us in beautiful trouble the strategic card deck. We'll see you in the streets. Woo -woo. <laughs>